Hello, it's Mark at alchemist.camp where we set up a digital ocean droplet this time instead of building elixir projects like usual because Nanobox for some reason, some unexplicable reason, just stopped working. And since that's what I was using to do all of my deploys, it's kind of a, a nuisance. I blame Windows updates, but I don't have any conclusive evidence. In any case, I've made a Ubuntu virtual machine and I'm going to create another droplet. And we'll use the Ubuntu image and note that this is 16.04.3. That's the same version that I installed on my virtual box. That way I have at least one setup that is identical to what's on the server. I'm going to use the smallest one because uh, honestly, I have pretty good efficiency with Elixir and even if I put Nginx in front of it, it's not going to be that much of a resource drain with the still meager size of, of this channel. Uh, I'm going to go with Singapore as a nice uh, central place between, well, in Asia that has a good connection to the US. And I've already made SSH keys on my home computer and I've already shared them with DigitalOcean and use them on other droplets. The same key here that I accidentally hovered over and had to cut the video on because it shows the key to everyone who's watching, which is probably reasonable in normal situations, but not when they're streaming it. And now that this is selected, the SSH key that I've been using from Windows machine, like this computer that I'm using now to log in, will also work from the new droplet that I'm making because this new droplet is going to replace the old ones. All right, now that that's done, uh, the name looks fine to me. I'll just create it. And while that's happening, I'm going to start this, uh, this virtual machine that I have got paused at the moment. Okay, good deal. So this is the guest machine, the Ubuntu machine. And I've got some directories that are already shared from the Windows host machine into the guest machine. And this SF underscore prog and everything under it is equivalent to D colon backslash prog. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy those SSH keys that I mentioned earlier from my home directory on the Windows side to the uh, shared drive so that the Ubuntu side can get at it. That's just going to be X copy for a recursive uh, recursive copy. So slash S gets the subdirectories, slash E gets hidden files. I'm going to copy everything from dot SSH to D backslash prog backslash SSH. And I'll put the trailing backslash so it knows it's a directory. Excellent. Now that these things are all copied over, We'll just quickly open up a terminal in our home directory and do a recursive copy of everything that's in media slash SF prog slash SSH to home directory slash dot SSH. Should be able to just SSH straight into this IP address as root. Seven, and if you can hear the fireworks happy Chinese New Year everybody yes I'll add that to the known list okay so we are logged in as root now the very first thing I'm gonna do is make a user because don't want to be doing everything as root all the time add user alchemist uh, <laughs> Add user one word alchemist. Excellent uh, password. Okay, don't need any of that information. Good deal. Now we'll switch to being alchemist. 
actually, no, I won't. Before I do that, I'm going to give Alchemist the ability to pseudo. Like that. Okay, now I'll log in as Alchemist. Now Alchemist also needs the same SSH keys, so I'm going to open another terminal. I don't want it to be full screen either. Very good. Actually, maybe I should just make Ubuntu full screen. Make it bigger at least. All right. Then I'll display the SSH key from my virtual box with cat.ssh slash id slash rsa.pub. And I'm going to display this, then I'm going to highlight the key, and I'm going to close this window so that the key isn't shared with the whole internet. Then I'm going to switch windows and middle click to copy it in. Okay, the key is ready to be copied from Alchemist's home directory. I'm going to create a new directory. Dot SSH and chmod it to 700 permissions. Then I'll make an authorized key file in it for this user. Once again, I'm going to do the pasting off screen, save the file so that I don't share my most secret key. Now that that's done, the same key should work to log in Alchemist. I'm going to make sure that you can't log in except with the keys. So I don't want anyone to be able to password log in that's not as secure. Um, should be under a password. Uh, there we go. Password authentication. Oh, it's already set to no. So the only way to log in now is through the SSH keys, or if I lose them, then I have to go to the DigitalOcean uh, droplet info. And I think in here there's um, there's a way you can you can just get a yeah you can access console directly from there. So that way I know that it's safe even if I do lose the key, but people can't log in with a password. All right. Now let's, oh, you know what? There's one other thing I should check. I should check the challenge response authentication. No, no. Okay, good. That's what it should be. Okay, now I'm going to, I'm not sure if this is necessary or not, but I'm going to reload SSHD. Just since I made some changes in it. And now it should be possible to log in with a new account that I just created. So log in as Alchemist at the same address. Excellent, it works. Now let's set up a firewall. Not allowed to do that because you have to be root. And Alchemist now commands those privileges. So I'll just sudo the last command. Okay, so SSH is a good thing to allow through the firewall. Let's enable the firewall. Excellent. All right. Basic server setup is done. Of course, the server is not very useful if the only thing it does is SSH. So let's get Nginx. Good, good. Now let's check our Ubuntu firewall options. And we've got some more. Uh, HTTP will only open HTTP, HTTPS would open HTTPS as well, full will open both. Right now we don't even have a domain name registered for this, or it's not even connected to one. So we're just going to do HTTP. And 
there we are. Wait a second, where is the SSH? Okay, that's very good. Otherwise, I would have just locked myself out of even SSHing back into the box. So the web server is enabled. Now let's see that uh, it actually works. So let's uh, let's fire it up. What's what's the address again? There it is. Yay! All right, we've set up nginx. We've made a new droplet. We've installed Ubuntu on it. We've made a user for it that's not root, but has pseudo privileges. We set up SSH keys, and we set up an Nginx server, like just totally basic setup of Nginx server, and set up a firewall and let uh, OpenSSH and Nginx through it. The next step is going to be setting up HTTPS certificates for the server. And that's actually one of the main reasons I chose to use Nginx. You don't need to at all. I have a different Elixir server running on AWS that doesn't have Nginx in front of it. And I just use set caps so that it can handle port 80 and everything is fine. In fact, it's got great performance, even for static assets. And uh, it's not an unheard of kind of thing. As far as I know, Heroku still has a cowboy server in front of everything they're running. So it's not like you need Nginx for performance reasons. Uh, well, you might need it for static assets if you're running Ruby or Python or really slow language. But in the case of Elixir, it's it's really just a convenience. And one of those conveniences is using tools like Let's Encrypt. And the other one is just the proxy conveniences. So we'll get into that next video. And after the HTTPS is working with Nginx, the next thing I'll do is set up a release system with Phoenix so that I can release from uh, the virtual machine or from my Windows machine, either one. Just use an Elixir release and um, have a really nice workflow to deploy new releases. And even hot code loading, which I don't expect will be necessary for me at all, but it'll be an option and it'll be cool. So if you enjoyed the video, check out alchemist.camp and see you next time.